Hi everyone, welcome to my talk on how to create an asset tracker with the fear and things board in no time. Um, I am Tobias Marquardt, an embedded software developer at Grand Centrix based in Cologne. Um, at Grand Centrix, we are working on all kinds of IoT solutions for our customers, from um, automation gateways for smart buildings to asset tracker. Um, and we are doing, doing this mostly using embedded Linux and Zephyr, depending on the use case. Um, so for today, imagine you want to build an IoT asset tracker for some kind of physical asset, um, maybe some asset that tends to get lost or stolen, so you want to be able to track it. Um, what are the typical requirements um, for such a device? Well, first of all, of course, you need to be able to acquire a position of the device probably outdoors. Um, the asset tracker should be battery powered. You need some wireless uplink um, to the cloud to communicate data. Um, you want to visualize position on a map and also get live updates of the data. Um, so what do we need for a system like that? I broke it down, I've broken it down into these five basic components. Um, on the left side we have our asset tracker, in this case, it's represented by a truck, so an asset with an asset tracker attached to it. Um, we, of course, need some method to get a positioning fix, um, to, uh, so the location of the device, for example, a, a, a global navigation satellite system like GPS. We also need uh, some way to communicate to the cloud um, via some wireless network, for example, a cellular network. Um, you will need some kind of server that receives and stores the data and in the end um, a front end for the user to visualize it. Um, so this picture will guide you through the rest of the talk and I will go through each component and um, how you could implement that. Uh, let's start on the right side, which is receiving data and visualizing it for the user. Um, this is actually where ThingsBoard comes into play. What is ThingsBoard? This is an open source IoT platform. It features bidirectional communication between cloud and devices. And it is able to visualize data received from devices in so-called dashboards. It can manage a whole fleet of devices. You can do firmware over the air updates and really much, much more. It's quite a complex and powerful system. Um, why did I choose ThingsBoard for this uh, solution? Well, first of all, it's open source, which is great and it's really super easy to get started with because it has a good do documentation. Um, and also from a firmware developer's perspective, it's really nice how the device API supports various um, common protocols. So you can choose depending on your use case if you want to use MQTT, Co-op, LWM2M or something else. Um, this is just a quick taste of what you can do visually with ThingsBoard. There's a huge widget library included uh, where you can pick widgets and build your own dashboards like you see on the right side here. Um, it's scriptable, very customizable. So um, basically everything you could wish for to visualize data. Um, so what are the basic steps to pre prepare things board for an asset tracker? Um, there's not much to do here actually. You can log in to thingsboard.cloud which is a hosted version of Thingsboard. Um, there you can create a device, a virtual device representing your asset with a name. You will get an access token for this device that um, the device will use to authenticate with the cloud later. And then you can create a dashboard for the device, select some widgets. For an asset tracker, it makes probably sense to use a map widget and maybe a table widget that also lists the um, received position data. You can configure these widgets as you like, place them on a dashboard, and yeah, basically you are done quite easy. So now the question, how do we get data into this, dash, into this dashboard? Um, let's start on the device side itself. I picked an NRF 9160 dev kit from Nordic Semiconductors for this, um, mainly because it yeah, first has good Cepheus support, and also uh, contains a modem um, with LTEM and narrowband IoT um, connectivity and also a GPS receiver, which is basically all that we need for an asset tracker. 
On the software side of things, I use dev here in combination with the NRF Connect SDK for its modem library. Okay, um, so next we want to get the position of the device using some kind of GNSS, GPS for in this case. Um, I won't go into detail about the code here, um, but there are actually just a few lines of code needed to um, acquire a GPS position uh, with the modem library. Um, the most important aspect here probably is uh, point, th point number three, um, where we configure periodic navigation mode um, because we don't want our GPS receiver to be active all the time. It would drain the battery way too fast, so we want it to um, sleep most of the time and wake up in periodic intervals to get a fix. So now we have a position of our device. How, we how do we get it into the cloud? As already said, um, the board supports LTEM and narrowband IoT for as uh, connectivity standards. These are standards um, specifically targeted for IoT devices. Um, and overall, all I would say the cellular connectivity is probably the weakest link in an asset tracker. So we want to get this part um, as reliable as you can. And so it makes sense to just use everything that you can get. So I will, would, would suggest use LTEM. And if this is not available, fall back to NB-IoT. Um, I won't go into detail what the differences are between those, those two. It's just important to know that NB-IoT um, has quite low data rates and high latency, which makes it not really suitable for TCP communication. So you won't be able to use, for example, MQTT or something like that. So we have to design your application to um, keep that in mind. Um, yeah, here just a few lines of code, um, how to use LTE on the device. I won't go into detail here again. Um, as soon as you have a connection, you can just use BST sockets as usual for the network communication. What about the application layer? Um, so what protocol do we want to use now actually to communicate with things? But remember, NBIT kind of implies UDP, so MQTT is not an option. Um, but there's also co-op. Co-op feels like HTTP, um, but it works over UDP. It's much simpler has less overhead and more comp compact representation, and it is uh, designed for constrained devices and low throughput networks. Um, even at, so it works over UDP, but and U UDP guarantees no reliability, but co-op has some lightweight reliability mechanism that you can use if you want them. And that's really nice because then you can use, um, decide on the application level if you need reliability for some kinds of messages or use cases or not. So you have um, the freedom to choose. Um, I think I'm already running out of time, so I will pretty much skip this code snippet, which just shows how to send a co-op request. You will see that it's really very similar to HTTP. Um, but let's look at the big picture again. Um, so now I have pretty much covered all the technologies and components that, that we need for the system. And I would say um, using DEFI and ThingSport, it's really quite like a walk in the park to get uh, to a working prototype of an asset tracker. Um, and actually, that's what I did last weekend. I took a walk in the park with my asset tracker. And here's the result. Um, you see the ThingSport dashboard, how it uh, visualize, visualizes the route that I took. Um, the device woke up every minute, sent uh, got a GPS fix, send it to the cloud, and all the data is there. Um, if you want to play around with this yourself, there is a working sample application on GitHub that you can use as a starting point. Um, also at Grand Centrix, we are working on a ThingSport SDK to make uh, communication with ThingSport uh, over co-op even easier. Uh, check this out. And yeah, also, if you want to build cool IoT solutions like asset trackers, join our team. Um, I think I don't really have time for questions, but if you have questions, please come talk to me later. <laughs>